Hello, friends. We are covering part three of the Essential Consultant Success Path today. If you didn't catch part one and two, make sure to go back and check the videos. Um, they are so good. I am loving the the rundown, the the walkthrough of going back to the basics. It's been so beneficial. So, without further ado, I think I need to log back in. I think my I think it logged me out. Womp womp workstation. All right, we're gonna do this. I'm going to get there. And so if you know, actually, I'm going to start right here. If you are new and watching this and you're thinking, what the heck is an essential consultant success path and how do I get there? I'm going to show you. All right. So right here, I am already logged into the workstation. Um, it happens to be on the news tab. What you want to do is up at the top or on the side, if you have that three line hamburger drop down menu, you're going to go to the training tab. You're going to go to success paths. And because of my title, I have access to all prior title success paths. But if you are brand new, you will only see the essential consultant success path. If you are certified, you will see certified and essential, essential, um, so on and so forth. So every time that you promote to the next level, you'll still have access to the other ones to be able to help um, new teammates learn and grow too. So essential consultant success path. Um, we are down here on the spotlight for party on the go. So party on the go. Um, I'm just going to kind of read through this and then we'll talk about other party on the go ideas that if they don't touch, we can talk about. So sharing Sensi is easier than ever with on-the-go parties. You can just put together little bags, baskets, whatever, and um, give people the ability to take it with them because so many people are busy. They have crazy lives. They're going to kids' activities, their own personal activities. Maybe they travel. So this is a great option for uh, just taking with them literally wherever. So you can get testers and samples, and um, this is a really awesome tip. They recommend including 20 to 40 fragrances and a handful of samples. Great for like the super small pouch parties. I actually have a small bag. I should have, I should have prepped it better. Pretend like I'm holding it. So with these bars in your starter kit, it comes with the felt option. Those little bar shaped felt pieces that you can dip your wax samples in. The easiest way to do this, you don't have to go out and get other tools. You use, you have a warmer, right? you have warmers. So put the wax in the warmer and then dip the, the felt pieces into the wax and voila, you've got samples. If you don't happen to have those bar shapes, um, and by the way, another tip with those, those are very thick and they absorb a lot of wax. So depending on how many samples you're trying to give out or how many felt pieces you have, you can cut those suckers in half and double your sample capacity. You can also just get on Amazon, they've got small circle felt samples. Um, they're so small and there's like a thousand in a pack. You can, they go really far. They go really far and they hold this fragrance really well. So they, they give a really good um, demonstration of what the scent smells like. Okay. So samples in the pack, marketing materials. It's important to showcase the, the products, the features, benefits, all that. So um, some things you can include are catalogs. If you have stickers, maybe you don't have the ability to make wax samples. You can put the stickers on like a sheet of paper. So here's what I have. I print out a rack card size file and then I include the new set stickers on there. What'd you say, Cynthia? Nothing. Oh, cool. <laughs> Accidental unmute. Uh, so I include these so that people can kind of get an idea of how they smell. Something else I've seen people do is put them on a little ring and put each one on its own paper. So it's almost like a flip book that they can sniff their way through. So that's something fun and simple you can include. So whether you have the large catalogs, the showcase brochures that are this size that fold beautifully, they're just a condensed version. Or if you just have the product sheet, which is a one page um, catalog, grab that real quick, front and back, these mail very nicely in a regular envelope. Uh, it's important to have something that they can look at if it's an on-the-go party that they can physically have in their hands that they can smell um so you get to kind of mix and match and choose what goes in there but having things that they can touch and look at are super important so here's another pro tip if you are going digital consider creating a qr code that links to the digital catalog 
or your personal website for easy perusing. Everybody, almost everybody, my grandma will never, but almost everybody has a smartphone. My grandma will never have a cell phone though. So that's a whole different thing, <laughs> but almost everybody has a smartphone. And even from photos now, you can press and hold and get the QR code to open in a website. So QR codes, what we thought, you know, 10 years were going to be a fleeting fad are now back in full force utilize them. There are free websites that you can use. You can even use, um, make QR codes if you have an iPhone. So that's a simple um, internet search away on how to do that. So the how to order when they have a bag party. Um, they make it super easy to purchase, right? You can either QR code direct to somebody's party or they can collect order forms. So if you include those order forms in the bag, just have them make sure that the information is filled out complete you get the order forms and then you input all of the information and submit the order. Um, and here's another good pro tip, label everything. So that should a sample go out. Maybe you've, you've gotten a couple scent circles in there that you want your host to give out. Make sure they're all labeled so they know who to come back to. Um, include a lot of information on there as much as you can. So on my labels, I have, I use the circle labels and I have my name, my Instagram handle, and it says text me and my phone number, my website, QR code. I have all of it. So include all your information, any way that they could possibly contact you. Um, and this is a fun little uh, check mark at the end. Reserve time for three on-the-go parties in six weeks. Once you do, mark this as complete on the first things first checklist. So something really cool with three on-the-go parties. Do you remember our three open party plan that we continually talk about? Three open parties gets you 600 PRV if you close all parties. That 600 PRV as an essential consultant, let me make sure I'm doing my math right. 20% uh, of 600. Oh gosh, anybody really good with math? I'm gonna be very uncomfortable right now. Kaylin, it looks like you're ready for the answer. It's quiz time. 120, $120. $120. So if you close, three parties at the minimum of the 200 PRV that you need to get to, to make it a qualifying party, then you will earn as an essential consultant, $120 back. So simple. And the, my favorite thing about the on the go parties is that you talk to the host and they do the work. They take the things with them. They contact their friends and they make sure that they get smelled, right? So simple. All right, next lesson prospecting for an on-the-go party. So like, who do you ask? They're perfect, like I said earlier, for those who are busy, they can be taken to work, school, the gym, anywhere. Um, after you've figured out how you want to party, uh, how you want to put it together, show it off. I actually have one that I, it's called the Just Try It Already Packet. This is intended for somebody who is considering starting their own Scentsy business, but very similar things can go in your uh, party pack. So I just have small testers that I'd made previously. They're not necessarily the new fragrances, but they are current fragrances. A sample of washer whiffs, a sample of the dryer sheets, some swipes, um, stickers, and just some, some paperwork, some order forms. But look how thin that is. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. This can fit in anybody's purse or bag, unless you have one of those body clutches. In which case, I would recommend that your host carries a purse for a week, you know? Taking stylish pictures to show off your basket or your bag or your pouch, however you're um, doing it, is really incentivizing to people, right? Human beings, just by nature, are creatures who love the visible, pretty aesthetic things. And so making sure that you take decent photos or even just teaser photos, like, oh, sending this one out in the mail, who wants one next? Um. Oftentimes people have FOMO. And so if you create this, this look of, oh my gosh, other people are having this and wanting this, uh, I want it too. Uh, you're going to really attract more people. So who you want to talk to back to that current customers and previous hosts, um, are also great people and people that you're close with ask, Hey, I'm trying something new. Uh, would you mind being my Guinea pig? Would you mind helping me out? People want to help you. So don't be afraid to make that ask and try making a basket building video that show the behind the scenes. People love behind the scenes, kind of like those get ready with me videos, like build a pouch party with me and or your basket party and put all the things in there. It's so fun. And it generates a little bit more buzz. 
Um, customize the experience. Once you pair your basket with the perfect host, then you can add personalized touches to increase the excitement or engagement for that specific host. Um, a, th a few things to keep in mind are getting to know your host, uh, determine which products they either haven't tried yet and want to try. Maybe they haven't tried our pod system. So maybe including a mini fan or a wall fan and some pods for them to try are going to be key. Um, maybe they have specific fragrances that they just absolutely love. And we've got an LTO that suits their needs. Maybe include some samples of that. Um, so just get to know them. That way you can make better, more curated suggestions and add things to their basket. So an example they have here is a teacher. Consider adding items to that would work for their classroom, like a wall fan diffuser. <laughs> or is your host in the car a lot? Consider a car bar or some sort of bundle, an on-the-go situation that they could really highlight. Like, okay, I'm 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 getting ready to earn some some free sensi. I'm having a party. Who wants a link? Here's how I'm using it this week. Um, and you can even just make it the borrow basket. You know, full size products that they can borrow for a week, try out, and maybe they're going to add it to their wish list so that they know. Okay, I need to earn. So many in host rewards to be able to get this wish list item for free. And this is something fun. Add flair. Um, another term that I heard recently is called lanyap. It's just that little something extra. Um, so that lanyap, the flair, the extras can be candy or snacks to share on the go, blank wish lists for people to fill out, customize inserts with like that their their shopping QR code, things like that. Another thing that you can do is actually what I, how I really built a lot of my business when we lived overseas in Korea was basket parties for out of town people. And that's where these flatter versions really came in handy mailing things that, and I, what I would always do is I actually sent bigger pouches, but I also re included a return envelope. So I already prepaid the postage. They were going to have it sent back right back to me when they were done, but that allowed me to provide more, um, samples, larger sizes, more things for them to get their hands on and try, and a bigger bag that they could take around with them for a week to collect more orders. So if you want it back, include a return and um, shipping. I would I would absolutely encourage that. It makes it easier on them. But if you don't care about getting it back, try something like this, small and simple. And it mails a lot cheaper if it's thinner and lighter. <laughs> That's a pro tip. Another pro tip is your host doesn't have to pick just one party type. You can combine them easily. Like we talked about for the online parties the other um, last time, you can combine any and all sorts of parties, a text party, Facebook, on the go, so many options. Okay. This is all about sharing with your on the go party. Help your host showcase their basket party. This is where that host coaching is going to really come in how to prepare them, make sure they know all the details, how to talk to their friends, how to share. Brainstorm um, where they're going so you can figure out how to make their bag shine. If they're in an office environment, frequenting the gym, a church group, um, where figure out what they do in their life so that you can help remind them, oh, take your basket there. You're going to have interactions with X, Y, and Z people. And make sure that they make a wish list. That goes a long way into, okay, I want all of these things. Okay, now we have to look at these party rewards that we see here. What do I need to get my party to, to be able to get most of my wish list for free and half off? Um, and don't forget, we always have the option for the bundle and save options. And don't forget with the host rewards, we can still bundle and save, but we don't get to double dip on the, um, the discount. The bundle is at the retail value. So that's just something to keep in mind as you're host coaching your people. Uh, it's fun to just include a little cheat sheet for the party with contact information so that they can reference it at any time. Discuss different payment options, um, what potential shipping rates might be. Make sure that your hosts have that information. And payment is really how you want to deal with it. Do you have a Venmo account set up? Do you use Square invoicing? Do you use Apple Pay, Cash App, Facebook Pay? Um, or are you just going to contact the customer and get their card over the phone? Let your host know what you do, because that is a personal choice you as the consultant get to make. Schedule time during the party to check in with your host to see how things are going. Don't forget to offer the opportunity. And here's just some sample verbiage options that you can use as you're talking with your host about the opportunity. Okay, and here's one that a lot of people miss as new consultants. We have that perpetual party reward. 
So this can be used at your discretion or at the host's discretion, however you want. The intended purpose behind it was to perpetuate the party to reward further parties, right? Um, so if they have one of their friends sign up to book to host a party with you next, then at that friend's party, they can get the, that perpetual party reward, that secret half off item at their friend's party. So that also encourages them to attend the next party, right? It perpetuates that. All right, y'all have any questions on this? No, cool. I mean, it's 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 pretty simple, and um, I do want to talk about other on the go stuff. We'll see what else the rest of this covers, and then I want to get your guys' input. Okay, so follow up on your on the go party again. Stay in touch with your basket party host and guests. Um, encourage your host to share the guest list with you as well and get you their contact information so you can talk to them directly. Sometimes it's hard like going through a friend and then playing the telephone game. It's really awesome to be able to contact the guests one on one. And so you can always include something in there like a fun game of, okay, the first person to text me from this party um, with their name and their email address and their favorite scent in the catalog will get a fun um, order for me or a fun, a fun add on. And you can always just send them a scent circle or an additional sample. But then that allows them to text you. You can have their information, open up that dialogue, and really be able to help fulfill their sensey needs. Um, Kaylin in the comments said, this training is making me want to do a few mini parties, mini fan parties with old hosts. I love that option. Yes. I'm actually getting excited because I'm leaving for our incentive trip here in a couple of weeks. And I'm like, man, if I can get a couple bag parties out to work while I am gone, that would be incredible. So I think that's going to be my focus too, is just getting those, those, some sort of bag parties out. All right. After the party is complete, don't forget to provide excellent customer service by thanking your host and the new customers. I know it seems so simple, but that's one of those things that can just unintentionally get lost in the fray, but just that, that quick, thank you so much. Something else you're also doing with, um, following up with the customers, you can say, Thank you so much for shopping so-and-so's party. You helped them earn X amount of free and X amount of rewards. I'd love to get your party on the books if you want your next round at free and half price. So it's a simple way to, to make the ask too, because you've already got that dialogue. You're thanking them. You're showing them what their friend's party did and showing, hey, I'd love to help you do this too. All right. Another pro tip is sending a handwritten thank you note to your guests. So I actually have my kids help me with this. and. Um, they accidentally misplaced one of these the other day and it's fine. We had to find a new one, but then I found this. So that's great. But I, I asked them to um, just write notes for me because they're also looking for ways to earn extra money and have more responsibility. And so this is something I, because it's a family business, I want to get them involved in. So if you have kids, consider um, encouraging them to do this. They just said, thank you for ordering from my mom in April. And I've already had customers reach out to me saying, oh my gosh, this is so sweet. I love this. Thank you so much. Um, and so I actually, I need to tell my kids that they've been getting some fun compliments for my customers. Um, so the handwritten note goes a long way. And then after you've followed up with your guests, thank them, um, make sure you get them in that follow-up system from last time that we talked about. Whatever you decide, if it's a 113, a 226, 489, I don't, there's a lot of options. Choose a system stick with it. And that's what will work for you when you stick with it. Um, pro tip, deliver orders with style and flair. Try wrapping products with fun and festive packaging. Include a sample and a category brochure as an added bonus. I want to caveat this with you do not need to spend a ton of extra money to make things look pretty to add that little lanyard. You can do things inexpensively. Every time you close an order, you can add for a dollar, 10 bags to your order so that you can have um, their plastic clear bags with a handle. You can add those to your um, order so that you have something to put the customer orders in. Or if, you're, if your host is out of town, you can have those added in so that she can have something to put them in. It doesn't need to take anything crazy. Um, but if you're doing it from home, I know a lot of people save the, the lids of their clamshells. They're, they're empty clamshells. They they cut them off and write the customer name and then just tie this on with a ribbon. Um, oh, and the bows. If you didn't know that these existed, I'm going to get one and show you. I got a bulk package on Amazon. 
And apparently these have been around since I was a child and maybe longer. My, my mom told me, and apparently I used to sell things like this in a fundraiser I did for a bell choir I was in. I didn't pay attention to what I was selling. Anyway, they're bows. They're, what did I call them? Pole bows. So this is a bow. And they are so simple. Watch this, because I am not a bow maker. I have a bunch of ribbon over there. And what I normally do is cut different ribbons the same length, and then I tie them. And so it's just like this fun floof. Um, this is easier. Let me just show you. It's a bow. Is that not the coolest thing ever? Oh my gosh. So I'll make sure that the link is shared. I don't make any money off the link. I just want everybody to know about these. And I hope that their life is easier now, especially during gifting season, like May and December. Is May not like the second gifting season of the year? All the teacher gifts, all the nurse week gifts, everything. So anyway, it doesn't have to be expensive. You can add your own flair, handwritten thank you card. If you do have the ability to add some fun stuff, absolutely go for it. Give it some pizzazz. Um, okay, so this is just options for the follow-up conversations. Maybe some verbiage if you need to know, um, if you're maybe stuck on what to say. These are some options for you. If your customer orders from one of your follow-up messages, then that follow-up will start over again. So make sure that, okay, they said they were good on one, but three, they were like, okay, I need more. Then they go back to one. So it's a cycle for every single customer, every time they order. Cool. Um, at the bottom here, I love what this says. Implementing on-the-go parties in your business is a win-win. Win! For you, your hosts, and your future. You can pre-make your bags or baskets so that they are ready to go whenever you need them. Your host has the flexibility to earn rewards at their convenience, and your business grows because the new customer connections you make. So, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Get started today. Next lesson. Okay, we're going to watch this quick video. Um, it's three, uh, two minutes. But here's how some consultants make the most of their online or on the go parties. So I consistently partied. Um, bag parties are my favorite. Um, super simple. I just put the testers in a bag, some catalogs, order forms. And my goal was every week to have it out. Then when I realized that I could have one out a week, I was like, okay, let's invest in a second set of testers so that I could have two bags out a week. And now my goal became six to eight parties a month. That way, if one flopped, one joined, I would still have my sales and my business could still grow. Um, but through those back parties and following up with those customers that would order that I never met before, um, making sure that they you know, knew what they were ordering, if they could bundle and save, because I'm all about saving some money, um, and helping them understand that. Because most sometimes if they don't think about Cincy 24 seven like me. So like educating them on our processes, our bundle and save um, and how to use the product was really beneficial. I would follow up with them, you know, thanking them immediately. because They didn't order from me. They ordered from the host and letting them know who I was. Um, here's my number. If you have any questions between you now and when your order comes in, I'll be glad to help you. Um, I also offer to add them to my VIP group so that I can, I tell them about, new sales coming up, new products, if I have samples to give away, um, that really help them come to me because I don't I don't want people to just be invited to something they don't want. Having them want to be there makes the world of difference. And I noticed that if I could get them there, they could see what my business was. It was it's it's me and Scarlett. This is what we do. Here we're making samples, you know, we're we got a new product in we love it or how it works. Um, that really helped build that relationship. Um, 95% of the people that order for me, I, I didn't know prior to Cincy. They learn to know that their support helps me be with Scarlett and allows us to do this together. I want to bring to attention two things that she said. The first one was she referenced me and Scarlett, which is, I'm assuming, her daughter. This is a family business. She gets her daughter involved helps. So cool. The second one, I don't know if you heard, but she said 95% of the people who order from her, she did not know before Sensi. 95%. So what does that mean? As you are starting your business, everybody that you know right now, they will not 
always be, or maybe ever be your go-to for ordering. So that's why it's important to grow your network through parties, through meeting new people. So I just thought that was a really awesome point. Okay, we're gonna complete that one. And then, yay, I love that confetti every time. It's so good. All right, essential. And then we're gonna go to this final one. Reflect, revise, and reinforce. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of the Essential Consultant Success Path. Of course, learning never truly ends. <laughs> so in this course, we'll take some time to reflect on your progress so far. So this is really important because if you don't know where you're coming from, how do you know where you're going? If you don't know what has worked, how do you know what to keep moving forward with or to get rid of if it didn't work in the future? So learn how to evaluate the progress you've made, identify areas of focus. Um, and at the start of your journey, you evaluated your why and set a new goal for yourself. We went over those SMART goals. And um, if your why is the same in the beginning, awesome. But your why can change. That is so important to understand and know. Just because you started this business for one reason doesn't mean that that is what's going to carry you through your business. So does your why need to change to fit your current sensey vision and motivations? What do you have going on? So review and update constantly. That's not a static item. So here's a really cool guide um, that you can download and print. Identify areas of strength and opportunity. Uh, during this last three parts, you've likely taken advantage of the opportunities to try new things. Maybe you've been inspired if you're going back to the beginning, like some of us are, and you're like, okay, man, I want to get those bag parties out. I want to get mini fans in people's hands. I want to do all these things. So rad. Can't wait to hear how it goes. Um, take a moment to reflect on what you've completed so far to identify areas in which you feel your skills are strong and maybe areas that you want to focus on. So as an essential consultant, that's going to look different than somebody who's, um, growing their team who has team members, or maybe you're an essential consultant and you see those leaders and you're like, man, I want more. Then I would encourage you to talk with your sponsor to help you figure out what the next steps are for that. But completing the success path and going through it again until you hit certified, until you hit those other milestones, being consistent is going to be the most crucial part, right? Discipline is a big thing that comes with that. Reflection is most effective when you have notes to look back on. So if you didn't take any notes the last, uh, whenever you went through your uh, success path, I'd go back and just jot some notes down, figure out what you wanted to do. Because oftentimes, like um, recently I did this with something, I think I'm going to remember that. I'm totally going to do that. I'm going to remember that. I don't need to worry about writing it down. Lo and behold, here I am wondering what it was I was going to write down and implement. So I really highly encourage taking notes. If you've always got your phone with you, which is probably 95% of the population, um, have a notes app. Write things down as you go. Maybe ideas that come to you. And it's okay to have a parking lot list and an action item like right now list. The parking lot list is something like, okay, that sounds cool. And I want to implement that or try that in the future, but not right now. I have these other areas I'm focusing on, have a parking lot list for maybe in the future, I'd like to get to this list. Cool? Okay, so activity, setting up a follow-up system, sending a text to check on customer's orders consistently, um, and keeping track of how you will follow up are the activity, areas of strength, areas of opportunity. That's just an example of what your grid can look like as you are reflecting on this. So um, these are some other questions that you can ask as you're making that list, going through it all. So awesome. And this is really important to you. Ups and downs are a normal part of any journey and your Sensi journey isn't any different. How many of you have had downs? <laughs> if, if you could see everybody's face right now, it is absolutely. How many of you have had ups? And how fun are those? But I did a training the other day and I used Farkle, the game Farkle, it's a dice game, as an analogy. If you don't Farkle, if you don't fail, how do you learn? So in those downs, there is always going to be a lesson learned. So take time to reflect what was the lesson and work on your ups. All right, here's another uh, quick video we'll watch on how to stay motivated to keep moving your business forward. We all want to accomplish our goals, whether it's to lose weight, get a promotion, earn more money, or something entirely different. 
but wanting something and achieving something are two different stories. And sometimes finding the motivation to accomplish your goals is tricky. So how can you get motivated to accomplish your goals? This video can help you get started. After watching, you'll understand what motivation is and use that understanding to determine what motivates you. You'll also be able to develop strategies for staying motivated. So you can take action on the goals you want to achieve. Let's go. Motivation is the desire to work towards a goal and the reason behind what actions you take to get there. Motivation is what drives us to make things happen, but staying motivated isn't always easy. To stay motivated, it's important to know what motivates you. What is your why? In other words, what gets you out of bed in the morning? What gives you energy, sparks your interest, and drives your actions every day? Once you know this, finding the motivation to achieve your goal is easier. Keep in mind that your why can change over time, but the tools to keep you motivated and help you take action on your goals can work no matter what it is. Let's look at five simple strategies you can start using today. First, set goals that interest you. Think back to your why. What sparks your interest? Where do you draw your energy from? What do you want to achieve? What is meaningful to you? Set a goal to help you get there. Second, visualize the outcome. This stimulates your brain to take action, build confidence, and achieve your goals. The more specific the visualization is of our goals, the more we'll feel motivated to achieve them. Try making a vision board so you can see it every day. Third, share your goals with someone who will support you. An accountability buddy can be a strong source of motivation, encouragement, positive reinforcement, and even a little of the tough love we all know we need now and then. Fourth, break up your goals into more manageable chunks. For example, is your goal to lose 50 pounds over the next year? Break that down into one pound per week. This approach helps increase motivation because it increases our belief that we can successfully get there. The fifth and final strategy is to develop good daily habits that will become part of your routine. Once you've established a new habit, you can stack that habit onto an existing habit to motivate you to accomplish your next goal. For example, if your daily habit is to write a to-do list, stack a new habit of taking a 20 minute walk immediately after writing your list. This works because you have already developed a habit in your brain for your to-do list. So stacking a new habit will trigger that brain to act and go for a walk or whatever your goal may be. It takes daily work and motivation to accomplish any goal. So think about what motivates you. Apply these motivation strategies and start taking action today. As James Clare said, every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. Be the type of person who gets things done. So awesome. I love when she said have an account accountability partner. Surround people who Surround yourself with people who are pushing for goals and have big dreams and won't let excuses get in the way. Um, and then habit stacking, super powerful stuff. So look to the future. Once you've assessed where you are and how you got here, it's time to start looking ahead. So why did you choose your goal? How will you accomplish it? And what will help you stay motivated? Marlo gave some really awesome tips in that. All right. And that, that vision casting is super powerful too. What will it look like when you've accomplished this goal? Who will you, who would you make a good accountability buddy to help you get there? And how can you break it up into to manageable chunks? All right. So I also want to say that motivation isn't what's going to get you through. Oftentimes that motivation is like an exciting starter. And sometimes it's not even necessarily a starter, but just taking an action, taking that next step. And then the momentum comes. So don't be afraid to take that first step. All right. Three steps to connect with your goals. Here's some cool suggestions. Make it visible. Write it on sticky notes. Put it in your fridge. Put it on your mirror. Put it on your computer. Wherever you are going to be the most, put your goal so it's visible to you as a reminder every day. Make it easy. 
Several ways to use technology to help you visualize your goals. Consider using your favorite tech tools to create a goals collage. Maybe a background wallpaper for your phone or your computer. So cool. Pinterest boards can also be helpful. Making it fun. Goal setting doesn't have to be boring. Incorporate some fun into reaching your goals by creating an interactive visual tracker that lets you see your progress. For example, you might create a mountain visual to mark your daily actions, you know, like that, that image that Marlo had. Maybe you have like a little mountain hiker that you're tracking up there. So anyway, make it fun if you want. Um, you've just now learned how to set this, the foundation for a solid Sensi business. And if you need to go back and repeat these courses as reminders, refreshers, new notes, go for it. Oftentimes in different seasons of our life, we hear things differently. We internalize things differently. So it's never a bad idea to go back and listen to something again, because your ears are probably going to hear it differently. Connect with your sponsor and your team. Let them know your progress um, and let them know what you can do. I love this quote at the bottom. Practice isn't the thing you do once you're um, did, I'm going to start that over. Practice isn't the thing you do once you are good. It's the thing you do that makes you good by Malcolm Gladwell. So don't be afraid to farkle, yeah? Farkle hard, more confetti, yay! So we have completed the Essential Consultant Success Path. Success path. Are there any takeaways? Because neither of you are new who are on here. Um, any takeaways you have or ahas or something that you would recommend for Essential Consultants just starting? I know it's an on the spot question, so I'll give you a minute to think. Honestly, kind of all of it in my case, because I still have two people that are under me, but one of them, she was the one who her dad had died like right after she had joined. Um, and I've actually contacted both of them to kind of find out like what their schedules are and stuff. Cause after that happened, she actually left out of town and there's been time with her family. So I've been communicating back and forth with them about like, just trying to get together. She messaged me the other day and said something. I just don't think that I'm the right girl for it, blah, 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 which she's been a customer customer of mine for years. And I was like, no, I was like, that's not the case. We just need to make time forever. I can like sit down with you. Um, she's kind of centrally located too. So pretty much everything that we've been over today out of the essential training that we just did is what I would be doing with them because they're one's not an introvert. She's got rainbow hair, rainbow, everything, rainbow, freaking Jeep. Um, and then the other one is like super introvert because she doesn't like to get on camera and she's I love her to death. But she's kind of got a bad habit of like being on the cusp of sometimes she's in a really good mood. And then other times it's like complaining and it's like, you got to kind of shift that. So I'm in the process of trying to do that. And I think that it would be beneficial for them to just really have a sit down and go over all of it. So I don't have a direct answer for that because the answer is everything that we just did. Right, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Kaylin, I saw you were about to unmute. I was just going to say for essential consultants with all of these different party types that we've been talking about for the last three weeks, just like literally don't be afraid to try every single one of them at some point, not all at once, but to pick one and try it for a month and try and only do bag parties this month. And then next month do only online parties. And unless of course somebody says, I don't want to do a bag party, but I do want to do an online party. Like just be open to that, but that way you get good at it. And then you see if you just completely hate it. I tried to do scrolling parties. Nobody liked it in my network. I didn't like it. And so I didn't, I don't do them. But there are literally a hundred different ways to do a party. So find the one that you do like that will work for you. That is awesome advice. Yeah, really, truly, don't be afraid to try anything, everything. Uh, because the worst case is it doesn't work and you don't like it. And then you don't do it. So I think that's more freeing than anything is you've tried it. You can cross it off your list. It doesn't work. Um, and maybe it's just in this season. It doesn't work. Yeah. Maybe in a future season, something that you wrote off will now work. So don't be afraid to try something and then put it aside and then revisit it. Cool. You guys, this has been so beneficial and I can't wait to dive into certified consultant. We will start that next week and we will only get two weeks of that before we'll have to take a one week break. Um, we actually might need to take a two week break, but anyway, we will finish certified consultant by the end of June. So make sure you check back for that. If you are a certified consultant, or maybe you're, you've like locked and loaded all the essential consultant stuff and you've hit certified, 
but you haven't populated the success path for certified yet, um, which it won't populate until we get paid. So if you hit it this month and you're like, I'm ready, I want to keep going, let us know. We'll help you, um, whether it's see what's on the success path for the next time, or we'll give you tips and tricks and things to do. But you guys, your time is so appreciated and I'm super thankful for you guys and we'll see you next time. All right. Bye guys.